All right, 5.7, multiply multi-digit multi -digit factors fluently. Make sure you have your 5.7 notes out. So the goal by today is to be able to use an algorithm or preferred method to multiply multi-digit numbers. So last time we just took a multi-digit number times a one-digit number. Now we'll do a multi-digit number times a multi-digit number. So like two digits times two digits or three digits times two digits or whatnot. So last weekend, a store sold 549 t-shirts. How can you determine how much money a store made from selling t-shirts last weekend, at least before they had to pay all their costs and everything. So how much money at least came in? So each t-shirt is $26. They sold 549 of them. I want you to choose what equation you think could represent this problem. All right, hopefully you got it. Partially, I hope you use the fact that we're doing multiplication to help you out. So we have 549 times 26 equals the money they made or the dollars or whatever letter you use is fine. Um, but we're doing multiplication because we're repeating that 26 over and over and over and over. So we can use multiplication to help us figure it out. So if we are using an algorithm, first we need to multiply this six by everything in the top number word. So we're doing six times 549. We're essentially ignoring the two for now. So we do six times nine is 54. So I write the five, or I carry the five and write the four. This is just like from last time. So again, I'm ignoring that two for now. Then I do six times four is 24 plus five, is 29, 29, six times five, still using that six, is 30, plus two is 32. So that's my first step, is I'm using that six, six times nine, six times four, six times five, just like I did in the last lesson. Once we multiply it like that, right? That's what we got. Now our next step is to multiply, use this two to do everything. Now, remember it's really multiplying by 20. So because we're multiplying by 20, I need to put a zero here as my first step because two times nine is 18, but it's really 20 times nine, which is 180. So I need to put that zero there to move everything into the correct spot. I like to cross out the six. Remember I had a five here and I think a three there. I also cross those out. Sorry, that was a two, I think. Yeah, that was a two. Um, just so that I'm not confused by any of those. Cause now I'm doing two times nine which is 18, write the eight, carry the one. Notice it's going above my next place. Two times four is eight, plus one is nine. Didn't have to carry anything because it was just one digit. And then two times five is 10. I don't need to add anything on, so I can just write 10. So I get that second row, which was everything times 20. Remember moving everything over a spot. So then once I have 10,980 in my second row, my last step is to add those two together to get my final product. Because each of those are a partial product. They're part of the answer. So once I add them, just like normal, 4 plus 0 is 4, 9 plus 8 is 17, 2 plus 9 is 11, plus 1 is 12, four, and then one. So 14,274 is my final answer. I would have that written down so that as you're going back to look, you can say, okay, right, that's how I do it. Um, if I want to use this strategy. So 
That's how I would use an algorithm to multiply by multi-digit numbers. So it can be more efficient. Like I said in the last lesson, it takes up a little bit less space than doing the whole area model. But if it doesn't make sense to you or if it just is harder for you, do it with the area model. The area model isn't this terrible. It's not like adding it, right? Like I'm not going to recommend adding 549 26 times. That is even less efficient and that isn't worth your time. But the area model is not less like terribly efficient. It's just maybe a little less efficient. But if you're that's the way that makes sense to you, use that method. Um, so I think on the notes with option one is to use the algorithm. And then option two is to use the area model. You could also use partial products. Um, but that's just two different options for when you're multiplying. Because, yeah, like I said, there's different ways, whichever makes more sense. They're not more and less efficient. Enough. All right. I'll go through this one, and then we'll do some practice problems. So I'm going to start with what's in my ones place. Multiply that by every digit in the top number. So 5 times 4 is 20. Write the zero, carry the two. Six times four is 24, plus two is 26. Four times one is four, uh, plus two is six, and then four times two is eight. So I'm done with my four. I'm done with both of those uh, carried numbers. I'm gonna move over to my three. Remember, because I'm moving over to this spot, I need to put a zero there. Shift every number over. <laughs> three times five is 15. Write the five, carry the one. Three times six is 18, plus one is 19. Three times one is three, plus one is four. Three times two is six. Zero, 11. Nine plus six plus one is 16. I have 13 and then 7. So 73,610. Now if I'd estimated and said 2,000 times 30, okay, well, 2 times 3 is 6. 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. It's at least in the same ballpark. It's at least the same length. Because if I forgot to put my 0, and I just did 6, 4, 9, 5, and I added these together, 15, yeah, sorry, Whew. Um, 10, 11, 16, oh gosh, 15, okay, that is really far away from 60,000. This is still far, I get it, but it's not near as far as if I had accidentally forgotten the zero. If I'd forgotten the zero, got this answer, compared it to my estimated answer and gone, wait a second, those are really, really far apart. That's a good clue I did something wrong on that one. This one, I did round both of the numbers down, so that's a good clue. If I done, say, 2,000 times 35, well, 2 times 35 is 70 with three zeros, and 70,000 is much closer. So remember, I could, if I rounded them closer, I'd get a closer answer. All right. Sorry for my tangent, just reminding you how estimating can help make sure you're doing it correctly and catch some of those mistakes. So 327 times 15, go ahead and use either the algorithm or the area model to figure it out. All right, hope you got it. Again, I'm gonna show the algorithm this time. If you tried the area model and didn't get it, I'm more than happy to take a look. Maybe on the next one, I will show you the area model um, in addition or instead. We'll see. So five times seven is 35. Five times two is 10. Remember to add the three, 13. Five times three is 15 plus one is 16. I'm done with my five. I'm done with my three and my one. I'm going to put a zero there because I'm moving over to the tens place. One times seven is seven. One times two is two. I love multiplying by one. 
so much simpler, right? And then I add them. 5, 10, 8, 9, and 4. So 4,905. All right, let's do another. 2,682 times 35. Go ahead and figure it out. All right, hope you got it. This one I will do the area of my... All right, my computer is being weird, so sorry if there was a weird glitchy thing. All right, area model. So four digits by two digits. So I need to have a box that's four digits by two. Now I'm going to 2,682. So in expanded form. And then 35. So now I have 2,000 times 30. Well, 2 times 3 is 6. 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros needed. 600 times 30, 18,000. You're like, where are you getting these numbers? Let me know. 8 times 3 is 24. All right, my computer doesn't like me today. Anyway, we're doing 2 times 30 here, so we get 60. Now we're going back to this line. Now we're doing everything times 5. 5 times 2,000. Well, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3 more zeros. 600 times 5, 30, with two more zeros. 8 times 5 is 40, with one more zero, and then 10. So now I take all these numbers and I add them together. I have to move my face so I didn't write on myself because I can get weird. All right, 18,000. So notice how I am having to write a lot more numbers when I use the area model with a big number. It doesn't mean it's a worse way to do it, but I do need to make sure I'm staying more organized. And for those of you that tend to get a little crooked and messy, I would use a line sheet of notebook paper so you can really line up your numbers. Okay, because so I have this row, which is a zero, this row is zero, 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 six plus one, so seven, zero, zero, four, Nothing, zero, zero, four, so eight. And here I'm not, I'm, I'm like making sure, but I even could make a mistake doing this way. Eight plus two is 10. Oh, I also had a three in that one. See, that's where I was kind of crooked, so I got myself mixed up. So that's not 10. That is 1,008, so 13. And then six plus one is seven, eight, nine. So let's see, 93, 870. All right, Whew. So do you see what I mean about the messiness? Because I almost missed this three here because I was not being as neat as I could have been and lining it up really carefully. So you just gotta be careful. And it might help, too, if I'd put some of my smaller numbers at the bottom um, as far as seeing all my big numbers together. I can help you with that. If it's a method you want to use, we can find some strategies to stay neat and organized just to make sure that the messiness is not why you're getting the math wrong. Because um, that would be too bad. If you want more help, let me know. And good luck.